Hey guys, Todd Helms out here with another gear review from Eastman's. This time we're taking a look at Vortex's new lineup of handheld point and shoot range finders. Hey, while I got you here, drop down, mash that subscribe button, flip on that notifications bell too, so you get notified every time we drop hot content here at Eastman's. Leave us a comment too, let us know what you think about this review, let us know what else you wanna see from us, and make sure you're checking us out on Facebook, Instagram, on our podcasts, everything that we've got going on here at Eastman's, we're constantly growing and constantly evolving to bring you the latest and the greatest out west. All right, so new for this year, Vortex came out with three handheld range finders. What that does is it offers the hunter different performance levels to choose from, different features, honestly, different ranging capabilities as well. First up in the line is the Crossfire HD. HD stands for high definition. All of these range finders, these handhelds, have HD glass in them, which is a huge step up from past models because when you got out at distance with a handheld range finder, say with three or four or five power magnification, the glass wasn't sharp enough sometimes to always pick up what you were trying to range easily. HD glass changes that game. You can look through this and actually range lots of different objects very sharply and very clearly. So the Crossfire HD is a 1400 model, 1400 standing for maximum distance. Now you're probably not gonna be able to range a deer or an elk at 1400 yards, but you can range trees and objects like trees out to about 950 and deer and other game animals at right about 750 yards. Bring that in and you're looking at a minimum range distance of five yards. I gotta be honest with you, if I'm closer than five yards, probably not gonna need my range finder. The Crossfire HD 1400 has five power magnification as well, which might not sound like a lot, but when you start looking at distance, five power pops pretty good. You start trying to range antelope, deer, especially elk at 300 or more or 400 or more yards, you're not gonna have any problem doing that with five power magnification with this Crossfire 1400 HD. This little model runs right at 4.8 ounces, so less than five ounces. Uh, that's, man, that's not a lot of weight to carry around, especially most guys are either gonna be carrying it on a belt or I usually carry a handheld rangefinder next to my regular binoculars in a chest pack. Ranging modes for the Crossfire HD 1400 include horizontal component distance or HCD and LOS stands for line of sight. That gives you two options to choose from with this compact little model. And in this category, that's a great value, those two options. You combine that with a scan mode where you can scan a target that's moving and get active yardages as it's moving. That's a pretty powerful tool. You wrap it all up with an red OLED display or OLED display. It's easy to see, red pops in low light conditions and in bright light conditions, it pops really nicely and it's easy to see. Black, especially in low light, in my, in my experience with a black readout, it disappears in low light conditions. It can get really hard to read. And let's face it, if you're not hunting right up until the end of legal shooting light, you're missing out. The Crossfire HD 1400 also comes with a spate of other features like an XR lens coatings, features armor tech, it's rubber coated, super tough, super durable. I could probably throw it off this cliff on the other side of this ridge behind me, walk down, pick it up, and it'd probably work. The beautiful thing about that is if I did happen to drop it off the cliff and it broke into pieces, guess what? Vortex has a phenomenal lifetime warranty send it back, they're either gonna fix it or repair it or replace it, no questions asked. That's what you gotta love about Vortex. This thing's also waterproof, so if there was a lake or a river on the other side of that cliff that I dropped it off of, goes bloop in the, in the drink, fish it out, it's gonna work. That is really nice because on backcountry hunts, especially guys, you, you can't control the weather, obviously. You get in rain, you get in snow, you get in dense fog, Having a rangefinder that you know is going to be impervious to those elements, it's just extra peace of mind. All right, so let's open the box and see what's inside. First impressions, right here. I really like, I'm going to set that there. I really like this ballistic cloth case. 
It's got belt loop on the back. I can put this on my belt. I can put it on a pack. I can attach it to the side of a bino harness. Lots of places where I could attach this and have it right at my fingertips. There are also two connection loops on either side. What is in the box, I'm going to show you in a minute, are a wrist lanyard, but there's also a bungee cord attached in here that attaches the bungee to this. So I'm thinking bow hunters especially. You got an animal coming through, you get your range real quick, and you just drop it. And it, and it hangs right at your side. It's not going to hit the ground. It's not going anywhere. And you can retrieve it real easily. And it's attached right here to these little attachment points. Vortex is a, does a nice job with their accessory cases. These things are all that you need, nothing you don't. There's enough foam protection, enough foam padding to this case where it's going to protect this unit from, you know, bumps and bruises and scrapes and scratches. It's going to keep your investment protected and keep it in working order so when you need it most, it's ready to go. A silent hook and loop closure. Lift up and it's right there. Reach in. I like the fact that this case see how easily that came out of this case and it drops right back in that means i'm not going to be ganking on it and tugging on it in the moment of truth i just reach in pull it out all right so this is the unit itself right here small handheld compact it's basically you know vortex says the crossfire is everything you need nothing you don't it's their entry level model and it's going to perform as such but let's just let me just shoot some ranges real quick. So I got some bow, some boulders here that are you know archery range. So let's grab a, grab a couple. That's quick. Twelve point nine yards, seventeen point eight, thirty eight point six. That's all bow range, right through here, really quick. The other thing that I like about this is that the computer in here the range finder there's no lag to it i press the button boom it's instant it's an instant readout that is that's huge because if i'm sitting there waiting for something to give me a range like in the old days the computers in these models not just the vortex the computers in all the handheld range finders they were slow technology's come a long ways and vortex has kept up with that with these with these models 82 yards. There was something on the hillside right there. 150. It's just quick. If you're looking for a rangefinder that's going to be give you a lot of bang for your buck, the Crossfire HD 1400 has everything you need, nothing you don't. Next up in the new lineup of handheld rangefinders for Vortex is the Diamondback HD 2000. The Crossfire was a 1400, this is a 2000. Basically what it stands for is a max reflective range of 2000 yards. That's a long ways. Being able to range trees up to 1800 with this and deer up to 1400 yards away. I don't know about you, but 1400 yards away is too far for me to shoot at a deer. And I can immediately tell when I pull this out that it's different than the Crossfire. I can tell it's it's the next step up in price point. It's got Vortex's ArmorTech coating. It also has a belt clip on it that is reversible. I could switch this belt clip from this side to this side. The cool thing about a belt clip, guys, is if I'm in the moment of truth and I'm, I don't want to put this thing away, I can just clip it on something real quick. Clip it on my belt, I can clip it on a strap. I mean, I could clip it on here if I wanted to and it, was, it would stay in place and I'd have access to it really, really quickly. That's the nice thing about a belt clip. It's also tripod adaptable. I can mount this thing to a tripod, which I don't know about you, but when I get much past 500, 600 yards with a handheld rangefinder, man, I have a hard time holding it steady enough to, to range a specific thing like an antelope or a deer. Elk are a little more forgiving because they're big, right? When you start getting into deer and antelope sized targets, Man, being able to mount this on a tripod is money. Not to mention, this gets you into competitive shooting. If you need, say, your P this is a PRS competition, capable handheld rangefinder. First blush with this, when I open it up, like I said, it's fully coated in armor tech. It's a, it feels a little more rugged and a, and a little more beefy than the Crossfire, and it should. 
it's the next price point up. It's also going to give you with that price point a little bit more performance. For example, it is bright out here today. And when I shoot a quick range to 22.8 yards, I go up the hill 156.4. That display in here, that red OLED display or OLED display is brighter than the crossfire. Now I can still see the crossfire, but the Diamondback is brighter, easier to use. Zoom is different on the Diamondback as well. You're looking at a five power zoom with a crossfire, you're looking at a seven power zoom with this. Seven power zoom, man, back in the old days, I had scopes, but that was our highest magnification. Seven power is plenty to range even small targets like deer and antelope at any distance that I have business shooting them at. And uh, that is really nice. But you bow hunters out there are going, yeah, but how is it gonna perform up close? Well, guess what? There's Lindsay, the camera lady. 6.1 yards to Lindsay, to the camera. Again, if that's an elk, I don't need to range that, but I can, and, it, and I didn't lose my field of vision, my field of view at all. I still could see everything. Say medium distance, 13 yards, and I can see almost that entire rock. Seven powers, not too much magnification is what I'm getting at. All right, so modes, you still have HCD mode, which stands for horizontal component distance. That's your, um, that's your angle compensated range. So this hill that's behind the camera, I look to the top, that's a long ways and it's super steep. Yeah, 29 degree angle, 400.3 400 yards, 397, 396. So having an angle compensated mode is huge. Line of sight is great, especially if you're shooting across a flat distance. But anytime you get into a little bit of up and down like we do out here in the west, you want that angle compensated range because that's my shoot to range, right? I need that information so I can dial my scope or I can dial my sight or I know which pin to hold or which hash mark to use in my, uh, in my rifle scope. The Diamondback HD 2000 is gonna give you that with, that with that HCD mode. It also has scan mode. Again, I can scan a moving target. So what's included with the Diamondback HD 2000 is a soft carry case, of course, which you saw, a two millimeter hex wrench for removing this belt clip and switching it over to the other side. It's got a wrist lanyard, a lens cloth, a utility clip, which you see, and a CR2 battery. It also comes with the little bungee cord attachment that I can put on that soft case as well. Guys, this is the mid-range, a lot of bang for your buck with the Vortex Diamondback HD 2000. I really like the brighter display in this over the Crossfire. Crossfire is a great entry level option. If, you're, if you've got the ability to spend a little bit more money, you probably ought to look at the Diamondback. So next up is the Viper HD 3000. This is the big dog. We're still looking at a seven power magnification, same as the Diamondback, which is plenty. Honestly, it's plenty. When you got more than that, um, the close range stuff, it gets harder to use. Your field of view shrinks really, really bad. It's not too small that you can't use it. I obviously proved that with the Diamondback HD at seven power. I could still get a really good range, no problem on Lindsay right behind here behind the camera at six yards. So 3,000 yards is a long ways. You're looking at a max reflective range of 3,000 yards. You're looking at trees and like rocks and stuff. It says 2,300 yards on here. I don't have any place in here. Well, maybe over there. I'm gonna try to shoot some ranges over my shoulder at really long distance here in a, in a few minutes just to see if it'll do it. I think it will. In fact, I know it will. We're just gonna see how, how tight I can get with it. So that's great, trees, great. I can range trees and great big boulders at super duper long range. What about deer? What about antelope? What about elk? Well, you're looking at a 2,000 yard range on a deer. That's a really long ways, guys. I'm not even gonna get into the ethics of extreme long range shooting on game animals, but what that tells me 
is if I want to shoot milk jugs at a thousand yards, or I want to compete at 2,000 yards, or I want to shoot little steel plates at 2,000 yards, you know, I can do it. An MOA plate at 2,000 yards is only 20 inches in diameter. That's not very big for a target that far away. And I'm going to be able to pick that up with this rangefinder. So, more than I need for hunting, but it crosses over really, really well because it's still a handheld, lightweight unit that I can take anywhere with me. This thing only tips the scales at 9.1 ounces, guys. That's uh, not quite two of the crossfires, right? Yeah, my math, Engl English guy, sorry. But yeah, not quite two of the crossfires. And so for that little bit of weight penalty, which isn't much, I've got an extremely capable unit that I can do everything from archery hunting with to big game hunting with to long range target shooting with. It's pretty cool, but yeah, great, Todd. W tell us more about it, right? Well, you got the same modes. You got line of sight mode and HCD mode. I've got a, the same HD optical system. I've got XR plus lens coating. So I'm a step up with my lens coating on this one. Fully armor tech, tripod adaptable, man, you name it. Bigger, stronger utility clip on it that I can switch from this side to this side. Not a problem. I'm going to tuck that under my arm so it's out of the way. It's got armor tech where it really needs it. And then it's got this black around the outside here. Again, super tough. I could drop this off of a cliff and it would work just fine. And I can pull that eye cup out. That's super cool. I wasn't able to do that on the other two models. I could turn them and focus them. But I can pull that one out, customize my viewing experience by turning that in and out. I can change the focus with this diopter ring or focus ring here. That's pretty darn good for me. I've actually used binoculars, guys, that weren't that clear. I can see using this model and the Diamondback when I'm hunting archery elk in tight timber, like Dan Picard's hunt from last year in Idaho. His shot on that bull was like six yards, right? I need a rangefinder for that. But hunting in that timber, and I've hunted places in the West where you can't see very far. I didn't need binoculars. I could take one unit like this, clip it to my belt, and I could use it as a monocular as well as a rangefinder. So I could cut down on extra weight, extra bulk, and be super mobile in the dark timber that those elk were living in. This would have been all I needed to pick out patches of hair in that black timber and have a capable rangefinder at the same time. The objective lens on the Viper HD 3000 is bigger. You're looking at a seven power unit. It has a 25 millimeter objective. Again, I've used scopes that didn't have objectives that big. I've got this big rocky ridge out here on the other side of me. It's a long ways. I don't know how far, but I'm gonna see if this will hit it. Now, I'm going to try to pick out an individual tree on that ridge and range it or a boulder or something like that. So I'm gonna to try to do it just straight up handheld first. I might have to take a knee and get rested up. Two thousand six hundred and thirty-four yards to the very point 2,556 yards to the very point of that big rock slope. Wow, that's a long ways. So I'm going to pick something closer because I don't think there's anything on a hillside that's 500 yards closer. So I'm going to shoot over here and I'm going to try to grab a tree, an individual tree over here and see if I can do it. I'm too shaky for that range. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a rest. That's better. 1,803 yards. There's an open slope, and there's a dead tree laying on that open slope. Seventeen hundred and ninety-nine. So I went from eighteen hundred and three to seventeen ninety-nine. At that distance, handheld, that's impressive. 
the Viper HD 3000. Man, that one gets my vote. All right, guys, so that is my review of the new lineup of Vortex handheld range finders. You got the Viper HD 3000, you got the Diamondback HD 2000, and you got the Crossfire HD 1400. There is a price point in here for everybody out there. There's performance levels according to price point. If you are in the market for a handheld range finder, check these out from Vortex. Till next time, guys, I don't have anything else, so I guess we'll see you in the field.